Greetings, welcome to Balmy Spirit. This is gonna be your monthly intuitive messages for the sign of Gemini. If you're resonating with these, then there is a part two you can access on Vimeo or Patreon. Links are below for your convenience. I am making some changes to Patreon soon. I'm still just sitting with them on how I want to navigate that. So just letting you guys know for anybody who is wanting to sign up or if you are already a patron, um, I keep meaning to go live with you guys and I just, it just hasn't been in perfect alignment yet and I feel like it will be soon. Um, so thank you for exercising patience there. But Gemini, let's go ahead and get into your reading. So the first thing I was getting with you, green. Green is a really nice color for you right now. So that was kind of interesting. It feels very heart centered to me. I also was seeing like a, I don't know if the term is like sapling, but like a baby plant, <laughs> a little baby plant that's got like two little leaves on it and a little bit of a bud just coming through. Um, it feels like you are in this phase of growth. Something has slowed down though, but I think it's been necessary. Um, let me get into that. It's been necessary. You know, it's actually very similar to Scorpio and you did come up a little bit in Scorpio's reading. So if you got any Scorpio in your chart or you're dealing with Scorpios, go ahead and watch Scorpio. But anyway, um, Mm, yeah, it's like the nutrients for the soil. Thank you. Uh, the proper nutrients for the soil to have your little baby plant grow. I feel like this baby plant is just representing something that has been growing for you. It could be something external to you, um, like a project or work or money or something like that. Uh, some of you it actually can actually can represent you um, and you are in a phase of growth for yourself own personal development. But I am hearing the word completion. It feels like while you are learning the proper nutrients for your soil, uh, it also feels like, I'm trying to find the right words, in discovering and recognizing and accepting the proper nutrients for your soil to have your little baby plant grow properly. I keep hearing the word acceptance and completion, the words acceptance and completion with that. Like accepting that the nutrients are what they are Interesting. I am hearing the word ego. I'm sorry. I just got. I just got. I just got to be honest with what it's coming through. Yeah, it feels like you have shattered some illusions, maybe some distortions in your belief systems about what these nutrients are, and even what the the plant is, whatever it is that you're actually growing. Um, it's a can. Uh, how do I say this? Thank you. It's doing things for the right reasons, doing things in the right way for the right reason. So you are, some of you are also learning to even like work from a different place within yourself, operate from a di different place within yourself, very intentional. Like, thank you. Being more aligned with your intentions as to why you do things the way you do or why these nutrients are needed to grow whatever it is that you're growing, especially if it's something external to you um, versus just you growing as a person. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> hope that makes sense yeah I'm getting like the fogginess is lifted the clouds have lifted mm, I'm getting a nine of, almost like wanted to do this for a minute like uh, like feeling like almost like wrapped in chains feels very like eight of swords nine of swords I feel like you have worked through an eight of swords nine of swords phase for anybody who doesn't do tarot speak that's like a place of fear and anxiety also a place of being trapped in your own illusions but it's like it's like this it's almost like feeling like being in a straight jacket um, could feel like a little bit like you've been going crazy. You had a little crazy making phase there. I feel like that angst, I keep wanting to do this. I feel like that angst was brought on by not having the right nutrients. Thank you. And attaching, thank you. And attaching to these sort more, I'm just going to say outdated. I don't really want to use the word distorted beliefs, but that is kind of, I just got to be honest, what is what it feels like. I'm going to say outdated beliefs in whatever it is you've been trying to cultivate with this little baby plant hope that makes sense and that is aligning to working differently operating differently from a different place almost like being more rooted in your in your intentions being more pure in your intentions yeah being more pure in your intentions some of you have been operating from a place that is way more like wounded like source like sourced in your own wounding yeah thank you which does not make for fertile soil is <laughs> I just heard Operating from wounds and ego and distortion does not make for fertile soil to actually grow things, right? 
something could be gardening or wanting to garden a lot. There's just so much imagery that I'm getting around plants and earth. You could also be working with the earth element very closely at this time. But that's what I'm getting for you, Geminis. Yeah, it's interesting. It almost feels like you're moving from your natural element of air to earth. It just is, it's just what you need is what's coming through. It's just what you need. I feel like fire is about to come up for you. I just saw a sun just rise um, over the plant. The next element coming in may be sun for you. Fire. Hmm. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and pull some cards. I'm going to use the Star Codes Astro Oracle. Hold on, I got to stop. Five and seven are numbers that are coming up. Um, numerologically, if you add those, you get a three, but I, I feel like I'm not supposed to add them for you. Like individually, a five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven. Five is about change and breaking free. It is a vibration of freedom or even like breaking things that like no longer serve, right? And seven is being spiritually guided is how I look at the number seven. I'm getting birds. You could be very closely working with birds almost wanted to say related to interesting uh you could be working with birds very closely hawks could be coming up ravens could be coming up i almost want to say birds of prey more specifically guiding you through this interesting any messages or insights for gemini's i'm starting to feel like a very masculine energy coming through um this could be your own energy I mean, sun, right? Solar plexus, that is masculine. Although technically, I mean, there's there's so much to say too, even with like feminine sun, but I digress. But I feel, what I'm feeling with you is that there's like, there's a, there's a masculine energy trying to come through your reading. Oh, I see noises all the time. Gemini. This masculine energy, I gotta be honest, it's making me a little nauseous. Um, mm, bleh. <laughs> bleh. I just want to get out of my body. Um, it's gonna sound so weird. Th this is just how messages come through to me. I'm almost seeing a sword like up like this. Um, blade upright like this. Like a sword is trying to come out. <laughs> uh, that to me says communication, clarity, the ability to forge, the ability to create and destroy. This is something that's trying to come out of you. The ability, yeah. You have a sword. Okay, I need to stop. Gemini, you have a sword. Do with that what you will. It's very symbolic to me. It's literally like I'm seeing it in your body and it's like the base of the blade is like down in like your root sacral and it's like this long blade that like almost like comes up here and it wants to come out. I think that's why I felt nauseous. Like almost like you need to like vomit your sword. Like you need to be able to utilize your sword. I don't even know if you think, I don't even know if you're aware it's there. It needs to come out. You need to pull it out so you can wield it blades as a symbol are for destruction and creation it can even be for protection i don't think that's it though it, th that's the blah, blah. this is why it's very masculine because it is also used to destroy it's time to learn that you one have a sword and that you can wield it it's one of those readings guys <laughs> it's one of those readings so there's that on top of this whole plant symbology that I was getting with you of getting the right nutrients for what it is you're trying to grow. Feels like the sword is a tool that's going to help you do that as well. Some of you it's just to help create boundaries, sever ties where need be. It does. It feels like it's more of a it is just for your it's from your masculine energy. That's all it is. It's from your masculine energy, but there's something about the fact that you're not even aware that it's there, that it's in you to use. Um some of you may have what is this? some funky digestive stuff and respiratory stuff. That's because your body's telling you, please use your sword. Please use your sword. It does feel like the way you use it is by communication, by using your words. And I feel like it is to assert yourself. It is. Yeah, it is. It's very masculine. It's very, very masculine. 
Some of you could even have dreams about your sword in the realms. <laughs> Any other messages or insights for Gemini? Where are we at? 10 minutes? Okay. Interesting. <laughs> we have Pluto with rebirth. I said interesting because I first saw this one. Virgo would digest. So we just got that, that like digestive stuff. <sighs> metabolize is the word that's coming through. Metabolize, metabolize. Gemini, this completion energy that I was getting in relation to the plant and the nutrients and all of that, you are metabolizing something that has fueled Wait, wait, let me use the right words. You are metabolizing some sort of emotions, energies, or beliefs, or programs that have been driving this outdated way of operating, okay? And I do feel like there's expectations and attachments with that, but you're metabolizing all of that. The sword is going to help you to do that, okay? And as you metabolize the stuff, as you metabolize the stuff and you're able to use the sword as appropriately you're able to use the sword appropriately you're also going to be able to protect this little baby plant so the baby plant can grow and on top of it you're going to be able to provide the nutrients to this little baby plant that is needed while operating in a place that's just easier more pure and more intentional so much to say there but yeah that's what i'm getting with pluto and virgo i don't think anything else needs to be said metabolizing metabolizing and so much about like nutrients and all this like digestive terminology that wants to be used here with Virgo but Virgo is also a sign of cultivation and nourishment and protection it is very maternal in a way but you are doing that by looking out for this little baby plant whatever the baby plant is for you my goodness the messages just be flowing today can I get another one for Gemini please I don't even know what to call this the night and the plant. I almost want to say it's like a night energy, like a knighthood, like K-N-I-G-H-T. Like to wield that sword is almost like to be in your night energy. I feel like there's so many play on words there because I could also see that as like N-I-G-H-T, like darker side, like the side where you go in to protect or whatever, um, destroy things as needed. That is like the night side, the shadow side, but I am getting, it's more about your knighthood, K-N-I-G-H-T. Hmm. Can I get another card for Gemini, please? Chameleon. Well, you are Gemini. The chameleon just came in. Hold on, where's that card? I just want to stay in this message. Um, chameleon. Something about chameleon. Again, Geminis are natural chameleons, but I don't think that's what it's alluding to. Or is it? Master your gift of being a chameleon. It's only going to help you, especially with closing out metabolizing. I keep saying it's, you're metabolizing it, which tells me there's something in your soul or in relation to that. But metabolizing these outdated beliefs and what dro drove you to operate from that place. <sighs> these messages are just really elaborate today. Metabolizing that will also allow you to master your chameleon gift. Interesting. Sixth house with sustainability. Sixth house coming in with Virgo. You could be an Aries rising, not necessarily. Or you could be a Virgo rising. We've got so much Virgo energy going on here, but again, not necessarily. Or you can be an aqua rising with Pluto being there. Again, not necessarily. But sixth house with sustainability, sixth house is where we function on our day to day, our natural balance and order to our bodies, our own health at all, all levels of that emotional, physical, mental, um, the organization of our reality, uh, health, even like plants and all of that is very Virgo and very sixth house, which I was getting a lot of that for you. So you could be in a lot of Virgo energy and that could be helping you to get in that earthy element and to kind of back off a little and take the pedal take the foot off the gas pedal of your own air element here. I feel like it is just helping you to restore balance to grow this little baby plant. But again, to facilitate that, you gotta learn how to wield that sword. So this is a very multifaceted reading. There's just a lot of parts to it. So again, just take it as it resonates, okay? 
what else is going on with the sixth house? There's there's something else going on there. Time. Time. Managing time might be a thing for you. Look at time differently, is what I'm hearing. Look at time differently for what it is. Okay, I'm gonna leave that up to you and whatever that means for you, because that's just how it's going through. Look at time differently for, for what it is. How, how it could, oh, interesting. Some of you are learning to bend time. <laughs> we That's very fun. Uh, we can all learn to do that. If you haven't learned to do that, that's fine. And even for myself, it's not something I can like really intentionally do that often. It's, it actually is a very, it's one of those paradoxical, intentional, unintentional things. Some of you could be astraling a lot too, like moving through time and space a lot. But when I say time bending, we can slow or speed up time in the way we're perceiving it by how we are operating energetically. If we are if we are operating in a way where we are, actually, this does relate a little bit to Scorpio. How do I want to say? Where we're actually keeping our energy a little pulled back, and we move a little bit slower, a little bit more intentional, we can slow time down. But if we're like throwing ourselves into something or throwing energy at something, we speed time up. So you see what I'm saying? It's like it's about the way we are withholding energy or giving energy can affect how we perceive time. <laughs> Who am I reading for today? <laughs> this is a weird reading. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. I am actually going to use beautiful creatures for you. What time is it? I got to keep track of time. Speaking of time. Okay. I'm going to get a card for Pluto for Gemini. 17 minutes already? It goes so fast. Can I get a card for Pluto for Gemini? You got two because you're Gemini. Of course you get two. Ooh. Page of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles on Pluto. Page of Cups is my card of innocence. It can be an inner child energy, but it's this place of just pure emotion like pure emotional experience, pure emotional needs, wants, ex like it's just very pure in, in its essence, um, which is why it's innocence to me. And the nine of pentacles is very independent energy. It's confidence. It's being all on your own and stable on your own all by yourself. Mm. You are very independent, Gemini. And obviously that's coming through here with the nine of pentacles. Why is there a sadness here? Why is there a sadness? I feel I feel like you are abundant and okay, this is why this is relating to the plant. It's the plant, that's why. The Nine of Pentacles is representing this plant. So some of you, the plant that you've been growing can be purely about finances, like your own like ability to stand on your own financial independence, right? Could be about finances, could be your own self-esteem, your relationship to self. Some of you may have been working to be even more independent. Some of you could even be almost like gearing yourself up to be a leader or to lead something, almost like maybe building a company. It feels like most, I'm actually getting strong Taurus energy now. Um, it feels very much like second house to me. It feels like second house. So yeah, money, self-esteem, even aesthetics. Um, second house rules the face. Uh, second house rules, even like glasses and sight. It also, because of Taurus, rules the solar plexus as well, or affects, let's say affects, affects the solar plexus is also very Venusian. So all of these things, however, that's coming through for you, this is what you've been trying to grow. You've been trying to grow the seeds for bigger foundations, even for some of you, because second house is the legs of the table that we live our lives on, that we live our life on. But with the page of cups, you're getting very real about this plant you've been growing maybe how it's become hard or maybe how you want to shift that. That's also why Pluto is coming in here. It's not making you second guess. I just feel like you're having a very honest moment with yourself about this little baby plant. Do you want to continue growing it? And if you do, what's the best way to do that? I just think you're recognizing something is not in, truly in alignment with the health of this plant. And you're just getting honest with yourself about it. That's why there's a little bit of a sadness. And I do feel like this is what's going to lead you 
to closing out and metabolizing those distorted beliefs and what's been driving that and the attachment to expectation there. You understand what I'm saying? So that you can operate from a more pure intentional place. So that your intentions actually align to what your soul actually wants and the results of what you want in having this plant fully grow to fruition. I know I'm using a lot of words here. I, I, I just got to trust it's hitting. <laughs> okay. Let's get into Virgo. Any messages or insights for Virgo? I say Virgo because Virgo's here. I feel like I needed to clarify that for a minute. For my Geminis. If you are a Gemini rising, where is Virgo for you? Ooh, fourth house. Stability. Yeah, Gemini. I feel like all of this is, umbra okay, the umbrella paraphrasing of what's going on here. You're working on your own foundations. Foundation of money, foundation of self-esteem, foundation of the things that you want to build to grow into the long term for yourself that will nourish you in the long term. That is what is happening here. Overall, paraphrase. Can I get a card for Virgo, please, for my Geminis? Oh. Oh. Three of Swords. I'm hearing that word metabolize again. Yeah, I feel like this is alluding to what needs to be metabolized. I'm getting that like straight jacket feeling again, the eight of swords, the nine of swords, that angstiness and like, Lah. like Lah. I need this to work. I need this to function. I need this to grow. You know, it's kind of like that with a little bit of like confusion and haziness. It's all rooted in something and you're metabolizing it, which tells me it's really affected your solar. Okay. You're metabolizing it. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just alluding to the fact that it's, it's something that is probably, um, rooted in something painful or traumatic or you learn to operate this way out of unpleasant situations, okay? It's, ugh, I'm getting tension and stress. I do feel like there's a bit of a tug of war that you have been closing out with yourself here. Again, leading to better ways of operating. Now let's go ahead and move into six house. I don't know what to call this reading. Can I get a card for Gemini, please, for six house? And if you're a Gemini rising, this would be Scorpio. If you're a Gemini rising, which also makes sense with the word metabolize. I feel like that's a very Scorpio thing, too. Scorpio will just, like, just devour things. And poop out light, <laughs> essentially. Ooh. Oh, okay. We have two of swords, potential friendship or partnership coming up in this reading for you as well, um, affecting the circumstances for you. Eight of wands, I'm getting communication with that. Eight of wands can also be like movement or travel. Uh, I'm getting communication. I am getting communication. And then we have five of swords with six house. I feel like there's some confusion again that you have been closing out and moving through and I'm getting it here. And it all just comes down to what really is gonna provide you the best balance and the right nutrients to grow what you've been wanting to grow. Don't forget your sword. I heard, don't forget your sword. Don't forget your sword. And to use it appropriately. Oh, the polarity here. Yeah, and to use it appropriately. I feel like there you've been you've been trying to set boundaries. I can see that. Setting boundaries is going to be good with you, even if it's boundaries for yourself, to be disciplined with yourself. I can I can feel both polarities here of the power of yielding your wielding your sword and what that gifts you in order to again cultivate the plant in the way you need to cultivate the plant, right? And operate the, in the way that is actually going to be better for you and the growth of your plant in the long term. But I can also, I can also see a very, mm, I want to say this, a misuse of it. I can also see a misuse 
of the sword. So just be very mindful here. And some of you, so some of you who are already aware of this metaphorical sword, a gift of yours in your own masculine energy, are also coming to terms with it. Like coming to terms with how you have misused it in the past and how you can use it better moving forward. But that's what I'm getting with everything here. I do feel like you're setting boundaries with people, maybe even just one person. And it's leading to less like angstiness because I feel like you've been around a person or some people that have actually been perpetuating the outdated beliefs or perpetuating you operating out of outdated beliefs. How do I want to say this? Um, I don't know if this is a saying. No, it's not a saying. Okay, so I'm like, how do I say it then if it's not a saying? When we learn to operate in certain ways that are not exactly healthy, right? Mostly from family, because let's be real, it's usually where it comes from, right? Uh, family or people we grew up with. If we're still around them, it's going to be harder to actually break ourselves of operating out of those old ways. It, ju that's, it just is what it is, right? If you keep, okay, thank you. If you keep reintroducing yourself to the poison, how do you expect to cure yourself of the poison, right? That just needed to be said. Anyway, Gemini's, we're 26 minutes in and I need to do a part two, but I hope that this has been supportive for you guys. And if you're joining me for part two, I will see you over there really soon. And good luck protecting your little baby plant and wielding your sword. And I will see you guys later. Have a good night, Gemini's. Bye.